How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing the Bass. Um, let's just say I'm at a lake that nobody is here. I don't know why. Maybe it sucks, but we're here to find out. I'm gonna set up some flags. We're gonna talk to you guys about why flag fishing or tip up fishing is very important and why I think you guys should do it more often. This year I have dedicated and put more effort into tip up fishing. Believe it or not, I've been having them for like three years and I used it here and there, but I never truly focused on it because I was addicted to like the rod bending, right? So hopefully in this video we could talk about like setting it up, prepping it, using it, why use it, where to use it and all that fun jazz i don't have much plan today besides just coming out here and killing some time and hopefully we can catch some fish for you guys so with that being said stay tuned let's prep get the stuff out i got the sled out already and um i'll see you guys out in the water peace it's gonna be kind of windy so i'm gonna try to stay behind the shanty here and i'm gonna talk to you guys about the tip up I'll show you guys right here so basically this is a flag right this is a tip up flag whatever you want to call it i've been having this thing for like three years now and honestly i never really put effort into using it until this season this tip up right here it gets a rep that it's only for like pike and like bigger fish right bigger toothy fish where you put a shiner on minnow uh sucker it's for like walleyes pike muskies uh anything honestly i mean that's the best part about it this thing works just about for everything anything even for crappies bluegills you can set up a smaller diameter line and catch put on a smaller minnow and catch crappies and bluegills off of it but the idea of this whole setup here is to catch big toothy fish i got my flags out so i'm watching as i'm talking the system here i mean it folds in to put in your bucket right but this system is like this it sits on this t-bar this t-handle right here and when the fish pulls on the line the flag shoots up let me show you guys again it's very sensitive too so when a pike goes and grabs the shiner and it pulls the line from this little spinning wheel right here the flag goes up it signals you to go and check it out. Then you have to slowly approach it. Watch to see if this thing is spinning, okay? If this thing's spinning like that, that means the fish is running off with it. It doesn't necessarily mean they ate it, okay? Sometimes they just bite, they just bite onto the lure and they just try to run away with it. But it's important for you to wait just a little bit before setting the hook, okay? That's the most exciting part about using a flag. Other than that, the whole setup here is basically 20 to 30 pounds. Figure out the brand is uh, Beaver Dam, Beaver Dam uh, tip up line with a swivel. It's a real simple setup here. With a swivel, I gotta hide my face so it focus. A swivel to 15 or 17 pound test, depending on your confidence. <laughs> Sometimes I'll go 20 if I have to, but as of right now, I just go 15 and 20, 15 to 17. I forgot what size hook this is, but it's a treble hook. I just took it off of one of my crankbait. I mean, you can buy them at the store too as well, but this is just a treble hook. You hook the shiner around the back of the head, as I'll show you guys in a bit on my GoPro. You basically hook it behind, not not by the head, but sorry, uh, right in front of the fin, I guess. That way when the pike does come and eat it, or big fish does come and eat it, they eat it head first usually, and the hook will go into their mouth. Oh, I just found it. The orange thing is this thing right here so basically this is what it is you drop that down there it'll help you identify where the ground is and you pull two feet up and that's it you know and um you put your marker on there which is a bobber i'll show you guys like so i'll show this whole process like when i'm doing it and when i set this one up but as i'm talking here i'll just show you guys what i'm using this is this little tiny bobber we just call it like the marker or the mark whatever you want to call it so that way when the fish does run off with it you can see like how far it went from uh the mark to like the fish right usually when you tip up fish you want to set up in like in my opinion less than 10 feet right i mean you can do deeper if you want to try for walleyes and pike that climb up on, on a hump but me overall i just usually fish the areas that are flatter other than that fishing shallow is like key right in my opinion five to ten feet of water is like the go-to uh, depth for tip ups hopefully we get a tip up today at least one again i, I haven't tip up this lake before it's new to me but that being said stay tuned and we're already on the water from the intro so all right, so you take a tip up. I'm sitting in, uh, you could say 8.8, .8, let's just say nine feet of water, right? Minus the ice, so we'll just say nine feet of water. Eight to, I don't know, eight to 10 inches of uh, leader right there to the hook, all right? And then I'll take my, um, my shiner, a big shiner, because I know there's some big fish in here. With the big boys, all right? Whichever one flops out first, I guess. I'll take this big boy right here. There we go. You, where you want to hook them, you can hook it in the back of the tail too, but man, I feel like they're just going to engulf it. So I'll go right behind the fin here, make sure your hooks are sharp. Right there, okay? This one's not that lively, so I'm kind of, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't feel too confident about him, but we're going to put that in there in the water, and it's going to dance around just like that, right? It's going to hang just like this. And I want him to twitch like that, but we'll see how long this guy lasts. He doesn't look too lively, so mm, sometimes they'll hit dead bait too, right? I mean, I hope he's okay. Let's see. Yeah, he's kicking. It's good. 
drop it down. So right around there, just a little guesstimate, you know, see how it feels, how it's looking. And I'm just gonna put this marker right here real quick. As you guys can see, I'm just tilt it out. Okay, so I'm gonna put that marker there. But I'm gonna reel this thing back up. I want it to be at least a foot and a half, two feet off the bottom. So I can see there, right? I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is my bottom, right? This section right here is my bottom, and it's a foot and a half. So there's the shiner right there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. This is how I set up. Just turn this in real quick. Is it on the lake? Yep, it's on there. And then um, you set this thing down. For pike fishing, I like to put it on the, the bigger knob because, um, you know, they're bigger fish. They're stronger. I want them to, like, have a chance to, like, eat it and pull it. If you put it on the sensitivity here, that, that, that shiner is pretty big. Like, especially shiners and suckers, they'll just rip it right off and your fillet will go off, like, every time you'll think you have a fish, but it's not. So, that's how we're going to set up. And when you set up, keep in mind, wherever the wind direction is coming from, you want to set this thing towards, like, the wind, right? Like, this part right here. Because that's what happened is, if you set it the opposite way, right, the wind is just going to knock this thing up and it's going to shoot up, like, every single time. So, flag is up. 10 minutes in here. The walk for this to me too. Oh, it's spinning. Oh shit. It's about to spawn you out. Nice bike, nice bike. Yes. <laughs> yes, dude. Two, two, two. Nice. Nice bike. You can have my hook and my bay, okay, buddy? You can have it. Just gonna snip it from here. Go between the gills. Just dip it down, see if it's ready. 